He spanked you? You, Bart Simpson? I begged him to stop, but he said it was for the good of the nation. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 facts about The Simpsons that will ruin your childhood. Oh my lord, she's dead! <gasps> oh. Do, 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 do. <laughs> For this list, we'll be looking at dark, serious, or weird facts and behind-the-scenes info about The Simpsons that may make you look at it a bit differently now that you're older. A spoiler alert is in effect. What Simpsons moments ruined your childhood? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Maude Dies Maude was the first wife of everyone's favorite left-handed Springfield resident, Ned Flanders. I'll get some hot dogs. No footlongs. I know. They make you uncomfortable. When she fell to her doom suddenly in the season 11 episode Alone Again, Natura Diddly, many were shocked. Fire! Ooh, a bobby pin! Oh! So what happened? Maude's voice actor Maggie Roswell had asked Fox for a raise from $2,000 an episode to $6,000 since she had to fly frequently to Los Angeles from her home in Colorado to do the show. Fox only offered an increase of $150, so Roswell retired. Let it out, that's it, let it out. Send me to more, that's it. Simpsons producers decided to kill off Maude to open up new storylines for Ned. Maybe we could grab a coffee? Well, that, that sounds real nice, Rachel, but uh, I'm... Uh, <clears throat> I'm not quite. I understand. The dispute was eventually resolved and Roswell came back to the show in 2002. But it is unfortunate that a pay dispute led to the demise of a long-standing character. Number 9. Matt Groening didn't want to promote the critic. A Star is Burns is a classic episode that gave us the joy of man getting hit by football <laughs> and the knowledge of Steven Spielberg's non-union Mexican equivalent, Señor Spielbergo. What you might not know is that this is the only episode of The Simpsons without creator Matt Groening's name attached to it. In the opening and closing credits, you'll notice Groening's name is suspiciously absent. This is because he was absolutely against the episode, since it included Jay Sherman from the animated series The Critic. Bart Simpson, meet Jay Sherman the Critic. Hello. Hey man, I really love your show. I think all kids should watch it. <laughs> I suddenly feel so dirty. Groening was quoted as saying, I feel this encroachment of another cartoon character violates the Simpsons universe. He even went so far as to air his grievances publicly to get the episode pulled. But I will suggest that there may be better things in life than seeing a man get hit in the groin with a football. <laughs> <laughs> Number 8. Maggie's Pacifier Sounds Ah yes, after more than 30 years, Maggie is still the baby of the family. And we're still waiting for her to say her first full sentence. We know, we know, she spoke the word daddy in Lisa's first word. Daddy. But she's been pretty quiet outside of a few Treehouse of Horror episodes. Maggie is known for sucking on her pacifier. Well, that and shooting Mr. Burns. He said drop it. <laughs> Have you ever stopped to wonder who provides the pacifier sounds? It turns out that Matt Groening himself was the person who entered the recording booth to provide Maggie's signature sound, along with, apparently, early Simpsons animator and producer Gabor Chupo. There's just something unsettling about hearing a grown man sucking on a pacifier. 20% off in lullabies! Just tell them Big Baby sent you! Number 7. Maggie Costs Relatively More Sticking with Maggie, in the show's opening credit sequence when she scanned at the grocery store, do you remember what price is displayed? However, incredibly quickly, if you said NRA forever, that was just a one-time trivia gag for the 138th episode spectacular. Maggie scanned at a cost of $847.63 until 2009 when the sequence was redone. In this update, the cash register originally displays a $243.26 total. But when Maggie is scanned, the price doubles to $486.52. No confirmation was ever truly given for the change, but the figures supposedly represent the relative, not absolute, increased cost of raising a child in America given inflation. Hey! How come my pay is so low? Given Homer's low adjusted pay after tax, it really shows how expensive raising kids can be. Number 6. Fiery Disagreements 
Who could forget this season 3 episode where Homer invents the Flaming Homer? A drink so good, it's like there's a party in your mouth and everyone's invited. I don't know the scientific explanation, but fire made it good. Mo takes credit for the drink, and as it becomes wildly successful, Homer is left bitter and resentful given that he came up with it. How could you do this to me, Mo? This bar was going under and it was the drink I invented and saved it. This conflict is said to mirror one between creator Matt Groening and the late Sam Simon, the series' first showrunner. Simon has been called the unsung hero and driving force behind the success of the show, as he developed many fan-favorite characters and ideas for Springfield. But Groening is the one consistently receiving the credit and accolades. He may have come up with the recipe, but I came up with the idea of charging $6.95 for it. It's too bad how two of the creative forces for the show couldn't quite get along. Number 5. Bad Bart <laughs> It's hard to believe it now, but there was a time when Bart Simpson was deemed a bad influence to a generation of impressionable youth. Be like the boy. With slogans like underachiever and proud of it, and I'm Bart Simpson, who the hell are you, found on t-shirts, it's easy to understand the moral panic the show produced during the early 90s. Don't have a cow, man! <laughs> oh, see? That's my expression! With Bart mania in full swing, some cultural observers began to voice their concerns over Bart's behavior, due to his rebellious nature and a perceived lack of discipline or consequences for his actions. This led to Bart being viewed as a bad role model, and it wasn't unheard of for schools to ban t-shirts featuring his image. Jeez, don't have a cow, man. Okay, dude. I wouldn't want you to have a cow, man. Here's a catchphrase you better learn for your adult years. Hey, buddy, got a quarter? Number 4. Beef with the Bushes The moral panic around The Simpsons didn't end with Bart. Hello, Mr. Bush. Conservative groups in the United States also took issue with the show as a whole, and saw it as contributing to the decline of American values and culture. This went all the way to the White House. In a 1990 article in People magazine, former First Lady Barbara Bush called the show, quote, "...the dumbest thing I had ever seen." A few years later, during a speech, former President George H.W. Bush called out the show, saying that he wanted American families to be, quote, "...a lot more like the Waltons and a lot less like the Simpsons." Hey, we're just like the Waltons. We're praying for an end to the Depression, too. The Waltons was a great show, but that's a burn. No, he steals my right to raise a disobedient, smart-alecky son! Well, that's it! Number 3. Homer and Krusty being the same Those are supposed to be baggy pants! Baggy! Ooh, I've never had a pair of pants that fit this well in my life. Have you ever looked closely at Homer and Krusty the Clown? You might notice they look eerily similar to each other. I'm seeing double here. Four Krusties! It's no coincidence. Early in the show's development, creator Matt Groening wanted Homer to be Krusty the Clown in disguise. The premise was deemed too complex, so the idea was dropped. That's it! You people have stood in my way long enough! I'm going to clown college! It originally served as commentary on how Bart worshipped his idol Krusty, but at the same time had no respect for his father, Homer. You're my best friend. Thanks, Krusty. It would have been a weird twist to see the show handle such a deep and complex idea, but we're happy with how Krusty turned out without going down this road. Number 2. Chillingly Accurate Predictions The Simpsons has a knack for making some bold predictions. Now, look into the flame. In the episode Lisa the Greek, Lisa predicts that Washington will prevail over the Buffalo Bills in Super Bowl 26. I think Washington is immortal luck. Washington! Woohoo! The episode was updated over the next two years with that year's Super Bowl contenders, and Lisa was always right. When You Dish Upon a Star features a sight gag of 20th Century Fox being owned by Disney. And in 2017, Disney announced plans to purchase Fox. I invested in something called News Corp. Dad, that's Fox! Ah, undo! Undo! The prediction that got the most attention is future President Lisa's passing comment of inheriting a budget crunch from former President Trump in Bart to the Future. As you know, we've inherited quite a budget crunch from President Trump. How bad is it, Secretary Van Houten? We're broke! It certainly raises a few eyebrows that a show can make amazing predictions with seemingly offhand comments. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Paul McCartney forced Lisa to stay vegetarian. 
Paul and Linda appeared on the condition that Lisa remains vegetarian. Linda and I both feel strongly about animal rights. In fact, if you play Maybe I'm Amazed backwards, you'll hear a recipe for a really ripping lentil soup. The series premiere aired was not meant to be the first. Animation errors with another episode led to this Christmas special airing first. Hey, everybody, look what we got! <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Tragic Loss of Phil Hartman Tragedy struck The Simpsons in 1998 when crucial series contributor Phil Hartman died. This deeply shocking and upsetting moment is the reason why Troy McClure and Lionel Hutz are no longer featured in the show. Hi, I'm Troy McClure. You may remember me from such educational films as 2 minus 3 equals negative fun. The characters were retired out of respect to Hartman. He was a favorite of the writing staff, and they worked him into as many episodes as possible. You take a dash of dad, a pinch of mom, then we bake for nine months and... Mmm, that's good Billy. In total, he appeared in 52 episodes, and voicing McClure was one of his favorite roles, with him once claiming, quote, I do it for the pure love of it. It's sad to think that we'll never again hear a new, Hi, I'm Troy McClure. You might remember me from, or witness the incompetence of Lionel Hutz in the courtroom. Do you have any evidence at all? Well, Your Honor, we've got plenty of hearsay and conjecture. Those are kinds of evidence. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.